Hello, Odafest family. Podcasts are being recorded from home offices, and Odafest is still planning digital community content, even if we can't be together physically. This is Angelo. This is Jay. This is Nancy. Here at Odafest, we denounce systemic racism and violence against the black community. We will continue to work towards a future marked by empathy and inclusion and stand with members of the black community, including our artists, creators, cosplayers, fans, families, and friends. We encourage the members of the Odafest community to likewise stand with the black community. In this tragic and difficult time, please be kind to one another. Black Lives Matter. It's been a pretty crazy year, team. Yeah. Uh, 20 has been <laughs> but, you know, kind of crazy. Hopefully we're almost for halfway the done. For the better. We're, it just takes time. We're at the end stretch of the, of first, the, half. Of the first half. Of yeah. the first half. We're not even halfway through. It's only the beginning of June right now. Mm-hmm. Um, before we get too far, I just want to remind everybody that this it will be our uh, season five ending episode. Um, we'll be back when we are back. It'll be somewhere later in the summer, uh, probably around late, mid, late July to early August at the very latest. We haven't quite determined it yet, but when we will be, we will be, um, just in the meantime, hope that everybody out there is staying safe. Um, there's a lot of reasons that you could find yourself in unfavorable conditions, but we hope that you are making wise decisions for yourself and your family members and loved ones even though there are some mad things happening but again for good yeah. cause. Uh, my main thing is personally speaking is that i hope that people are still remembering to social distance which is i know a little bit yes. crazy to ask oh my god i know it's a little bit crazy to ask but it's it's sort of a big picture thing that's all like there are many there are many big picture things happening in the world right now but let's not let's not let one thing overtake another in terms of like our personal safety and safety as a community, right? It's mm-hmm. a big thing. Absolutely. Uh, especially with a lot of the protests that we've seen, like you can yeah. see a lot of things going on online. A lot of people are not wearing masks. A lot of people are crowded mm-hmm. very tightly together. Uh, of course, right. most of these protests are hap- happening in the states, but in still... which the pandemic is not contained. Right. Even in Canada, it's not contained. We're no. doing pretty good, but it is not contained. It's only making things worse uh, later for future. Oh, yeah. Right. If you've ever played like Plague Inc. or the original Pandemic Flash game, uh, I mm-hmm. think things like uh, protests or the Olympics would happen and that would like greatly increase infections. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are uh, certain like, uh, uh, let's say, modifiers, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. just again, keep yourself safe and do what you need to. But remember there's there's a lot of things happening right now that are are exclusive from each other in terms of how you can sort of uh, uh damage the the community as a whole, right? Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. on a more positive note, much more positive note and something that sort of like transcends a lot of the the problems that we have on earth did anyone watch the spacex launch that was just two days ago it was a great stream for all of those who don't want to live on this planet anymore yeah they chose a great time to to say that yeah it was a great time to leave Yeah. yeah they took the scenic route to uh it was to the iss right yep mm-hmm. uh 19 hour flight yeah 19 hours apparently if you time it right the trip can be done in less than uh, four hours. Really? But, but they well, want to actually test most of the systems to make sure things actually worked. Uh, mm. So they went with one of the longest ways possible to get there. And so they took 19 hours. It makes me wonder what the uh, what the trajectory and the travel time would have been had they been able to launch on the first day that uh, before they got delayed. Uh, you know what I mean? It probably would have been similar. I guess. Because they were planning for a long trip. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. they wanted to be able to test things mid-flight. They wanted to know... They wanted to learn as much things as possible from the trip so that either they can make things better the next time, or mm-hmm. they can 
see, hey, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And make sure that and, things last for that as long as possible. Yeah, and as as usual, uh, for their first go, I, I always, always am a proponent for exercising the extremist of caution, especially when you have human passengers on on one of your well i mean they've done a lot of test runs and and they were really awesome to watch as well but like your first time with humans definitely mm -hmm. take that extra oh, amount yeah. of caution wherever you can yeah my favorite i'm gonna tell you guys my favorite my my two favorite things uh event wise that happened during that launch uh mm -hmm. that weren't the launch themselves uh, itself because the launch itself was like sort of awe-inspiring uh which yeah. is great Number one, uh, the good luck dinosaur that was taken along <laughs> to prove in, to prove like they were in like zero gravity to show that they were in zero gravity because obviously they, they were uh, the astronauts themselves were strapped in. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I thought I thought it was hilarious that like yeah they, they he put out the, the dinosaur and then it just like flew away and he, and he did that thing that anyone who's ever been in a passenger seat has ever done if they drop something he immediately sort of scrambled around and reached around to see if he could get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh -huh. I'm like, that's an Earth problem too, uh, and I really <laughs> like that. Uh, and number two was when uh, the, I believe the first part of the rocket, um, you know, landed back onto that barge. Yeah. Right. And and, and like we, we knew that they were all capable of that, but they put the the camera cut out, the footage cut out right yeah, before they did it. And then it like launched, and then it like showed the 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 rocket being back onto the barge. And I was like, mm -hmm. I, I I was watching this live with Bayfire, and I was like, it's a hoax! It's a hoax! <laughs> they didn't show it. <laughs> they didn't show it. Like they they just cut to another barge that had some other you know model of of the thing, and it's it's. It's a lie. All of it's a lie. It's a conspiracy. I can see it now. <laughs> Still. Oh, we've seen them <laughs> land before. rockets go up. Everyone's yeah. seen that. That's been going on for, for decades. Mm -hmm. Seeing the rocket land. That's, that's, the, that's the novelty. That's it's pretty the cool insane. bit. It's pretty insane, actually. It's literally it's interesting that... out of old sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that a lot of people know enough about how those rockets were designed to function to actually look forward to seeing the rockets land again afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like the, the defining moment of a launch is always the launch itself. You know, in the history of sending astronauts into space, it was always like, and liftoff, la la la, and then the fanfare and everything. Mm -hmm. But nobody cares about all of the boosters that like fall back to Earth eventually. Right. But in this case, because everyone's kind of on the same page about how these were designed to work and how they're supposed to be reusable and reducing that waste, it it almost is as important as the launch itself. Mm -hmm. And I was really, yeah. really upset when we didn't actually get to see it land because it's always such a cool thing yeah. to see something so tall land upright perfectly and not tip over. I was I saying, think... I, like, it, that, that, but it does create two problems I can think of. Number one is, like, going forward, will they keep on attempting to do that over and over again? And how much cost does that really save? Uh, versus like maintenance costs and things like that. Like I, I, I want to see, I want to see the raw data on, on that kind of thing, like statistical cost and logistics. Um, I believe that information's already out there. It probably is, to be honest. I just haven't looked it up. And, and the number, thing is, number two is weather. Actually, use a rocket, it gets cheaper. Uh, yeah, but I mean, then you have concerns the about like of it, yeah. longevity. Yeah. is the biggest is the biggest thing. Like, um don't want to be like uh you know there was a structural failure along the way because we keep on reusing the same parts and that like while it's an expensive endeavor as it is uh i don't know it just makes me a little uneasy number two is actually related to when i was talking about like how the first attempt at launch got delayed because of weather I wonder how much that affects because you have to have a secure landing area as well mm -hmm. as you do for uh, a launch area. So mm -hmm. you have to wonder like how much that affects the logistics of it. Like maybe the launch pad is clear, but for some reason, like the waves are choppy down on, you know, X shore. Like, how do you, I wonder how they adjust for that and how they accommodate for that. Because if that just sounds like it's extra work to accommodate for. I, I just Googled it. Mm -hmm. The uh, 
the SpaceX Falcon rockets, uh, almost every piece of it could be reused over a hundred times. Nice. Things like kind of heat shields and a couple using. other things can only be used about ten times. Mm -hmm. That's still huge. I'm, I'm wondering to if that's like ten time. times, ten times as in, uh, that's like before engineering uh, estimates for failure, or is that like ten? Like, legit 10 times max. You Every know what single I mean? time it launches, uh, to my understanding, in the past, they do a full maintenance on it. So, like, it's still well, yeah, labor I intensive. So. It's not like you just stick a gas can on it or pump it full of gas and right. say, okay, <clears throat> off you go. Have a good I one. Mean, I mean, no. I imagine that they have to be pretty meticulous, right? Like, you're going to, you're going to readjust every bolt. You know what I mean? Exactly. Or, like, check every weld or anything like that. There's like, definitely going to be an insane amount of inspection of every single part. Right. Because and of that's just still how cheaper much friction than there is. Rebuilding it. Yeah. Or oh, building absolutely. a new one. Yeah. And the biggest thing in all of this is not, like, the fact that um, we don't get a lot of manned launches anymore or the fact that maybe one day a privatized company, because of these kind of things, will... will push towards Mars, for example, or some kind of colonization or expansion of space projects or anything like that. One of the biggest things is an intangible in that it benefits the fu a future generation. Uh, it inspires a future generation in a way that few things do. Um, you know, like, even with all the things that are happening right now and all the troubles on Earth that we're facing, and those don't go away just because of like one cool space launch. Um, it's sometimes really easy to forget how easily children are inspired. Like I look at it and I see that's really cool, but I'm turning 30. I'm not saying I'm out of potential, but I'm also saying that I'm no longer sort of part of that major equation for building like i'm i'm just continuing a path and i'm trying to build a better path generally speaking but there are, but like kids seeing this if i got to see something like this kids better get to eight, mars before i kick the bucket like when I, if i was a kid and i got to see something like this when i was eight i'm not saying i would have become an astronaut i'm just saying that like that i i can i can only imagine how inspired that feeling is you know you know what you say so that though <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Every child who watched the moon landing got robbed of that feeling. By now, they're all Hi. too old to go to the moon. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Mm. Um. Okay, on that note, in, say, 20 years, 25 years, if uh, space tourism really takes off, would you guys, uh, knowing how old you're going to be in 25 years... Would you want to go out to space just to, like, go up there for a trajectory flight and then come back Hell down? Hell no. I'm not coming back down it's if I go. too goddamn expensive. <laughs> I don't going... even know what it'll cost in 20 years. I just know it'll be too goddamn expensive. It, it's going to... No, no, no. Like, uh, <laughs> I'll be like, hey, can I pay in installments <laughs> as I go up? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, part of it is... I w I'm the kind of person that'll take any, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take a lot of opportunities in life um, if they come to me and they make, you know, if it was sense. free and there was no. an open bar on the flight. <laughs> oh, yes, because alcohol in your blood is what you want when you're experiencing many G's. Yes. No. I'm That's sure they'll just make the blood I don't think flow faster. I don't think they'll allow it. <laughs> No, that's so, why you have the alcohol while you're up there. <laughs> I've, what do you think this is? A Zeppelin? <laughs> sure. Well, I, I just know agree. that. Yeah, like the, the, the honest scenario for me, and I imagine for many of us uh, in our generation, is that if you get to go, right? you're probably not coming back. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Like to a certain but, extent. I mean... Like, like, just... I don't know. Let me let me die up there, or just like jettison me off in some like sh shuttle that has like I don't know basic life support, and then like it replaces la life support like oxygen with like uh, sleeping gas, and then that's it. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> It'd be that, cool. That, that got dark. Oh, no, man. I think it's just a cooler way to go than, you know, being... What if... Being buried at sea or whatever. What okay. if instead I mean... of cremation, getting ejected into the sun is like what rich people start doing? See, you can't guarantee you're going to make it to the sun. <laughs> I mean... I don't don't Arguably, sell me on a false promise. At the That's very all. worst, you would orbit oh. the sun. But for a long time before falling into it eventually. I would need a I would want a guarantee. <laughs> I mean, guarantee. okay. Okay. I can guarantee you the sun would vaporize you at one point or another. It could be like no. in a year. No, 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 no. It could be like in a billion years once like the sun's radius expands and then no. it just happens to if vaporize we, your If we can coffin. literally schedule a, a, like, a, like a passing satellite or whatever it is to like pass by one of Jupiter's moons or like Saturn or something, literally like on... Oh, we've landed uh, a, like a like a explorer thing on a comet like we have impeccable mathematical ability yeah but you have to, to do it cheaply to... no that's what i'm gonna spend my money on i can't take it with me anyway and fuck the future generation obviously <laughs> jay but like the issue is what, all issue i have with, like, all i have to do is not have kids or your all i have to do is sun. not have kids that's very easy to not have kids nancy <laughs> Is That's uh, true. you have to like slow yourself down from the Earth's orbit and then let gravity take you. All I'm saying is I can make it to the sun, and I think they can guarantee that I can make it to the sun. So now here's That's the issue: what I'm Would doing. you want to make it to the sun while you're still living? Sure, whatever, man. We all have to. <laughs> we all have to go somehow. <laughs> I would like to choose. That's all I'm saying. I would like my. I would like. You don't get a choice. And how you come in, you should get a choice on how you leave. And if I can go epically, I will. I would I would prefer personally uh to have them dump my corpse in a crater on the moon <laughs> with like no nothing. No clothing, no spacesuit, no not set sometime, millions of years in the future, someone would come across and be like, What the fuck is this guy doing here? You'd be you'd be fairly well oh, I believe you'd be fairly well uh documented. Uh, no, not documented. Uh, preserved. 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 No. Because preserved. there's not really any oxygen or much atmosphere. Yeah, no but atmosphere, every single part of the... Uh, actually, no. There are craters on the moon that never get sunlight. Yes. Yes. So if I got dumped in one of those craters, I'd just be a permanently frozen, perfectly preserved corpse. That Maybe. would be great. Hmm. I mean... You guys have very put interesting me, put ideas. Me in that, why not? Put me in that crater with some Odafest underwear. That's All right. It. Okay. All right. <laughs> and assuming that we have Odafest I mean, underwear, we don't have Odafest underwear the now. The addition of the Odafest underwear made this just like so much more acceptable. I don't know why. Yes. Hey, you got like, a brand. Hey, man. Look, that's the big thing about the whole SpaceX launch. You have to remember they partnered with NASA. NASA's basically uh, like a customer in this regard. Also, I like, don't know they, how yes. many people know this. Uh, there was at one point thing. in time exactly one pair. Of Odafest underwear. How do you know that? Yeah, I remember is that. It, I'm just saying. Oh, Jay remembers that. Yeah. Oh. But I'm just saying, like, we don't have like produced Odafest underwear. I th I still think we should. For the record, this is not <laughs> this is not official. This is not an official thing. Odafest should have underwear. I have said for years, by the way, <laughs> that we should have had material, that yeah. we should have had socks and underwear a long time ago. Yeah. I see socks. Definitely. Underwear? Sure, why not? What are... If someone manages to find me an actual comfortable bra and it was branded Odafest, Oh, I wasn't really not? thinking like a bra. Because bra is like too much. There's too much uh, variation for comfort. Engineering involved? Yeah, yeah like just I mean, that's not, the that's not, not, not to be, not like, to be, like shitty briefs. about it. Yeah, it has nothing to do with being shitty about like bras or not. Like, like it's literally briefs? the idea that Bras just come designed, in way too many uh, shapes and sizes to be pro to be worn comfortably and properly, whereas briefs and boxers and panties, whatever, man, they're they're not one size fits all, but it's a lot easier to configure. Exactly, and boxer briefs can That's be kind of gender true. neutral. Everyone likes them. Yeah, they're super comfortable. I would comfortable. still like to find a comfortable bra one day, though. Good I luck wish with we that. would make more tanks. 
Think tanks. So back to the SpaceX launch. Did anyone else get a really good look at their new spacesuits? Yeah, they look like something out of two thousand one. <laughs> they are. I mean, like a so space odyssey. Much, they are so much sleeker it's, than the classic it's not, space suits. It's not just the spacesuits, though. Okay, well, first of all, on the technical aspect of the spacesuit, I have not looked into the research behind them and the development behind them, but they're very clearly very marketing based. But they can be, they because they're not made for like spacewalk. They're not made for. They're to my understanding, they're like very much like an indoor type of spacesuit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's no like uh, a flight I didn't, a flight suit. Oh. Yeah, exactly, a flight suit. I didn't see I didn't see any sort of uh, life. Uh, uh, support modules on there anything related to uh elimination of waste or anything like that i think it's essentially a flight suit that looks cool i mean they were totally probably wearing fine. diapers under there what what the whole thing really reminded me of is it was incredibly cinematic looking we we removed oh, analog switches and all sorts of like very well, the whole uh, thing traditional was like a touch screen wasn't it yeah, it was touch screens yep. and it was very clean touch looking. Screens. It literally looked mm -hmm. like it was out of a movie. It was planned, it was marketed. And that's sort of where privatization has to come in in terms of that like selling that 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 sexy look of it. Because it did. It looked very sexy, very sleek, very uh You're right, modern. Though. It did right? it did look almost too cinematic to be real. Mm -hmm. Yep. And like, I have never seen a spacesuit that is not at least a little bit bulky. Right. It it honestly makes the the spacesuits that we that NASA normally uses and cosmonauts usually use sort of look like um kind They're of like a like a like dated a punk and retro. Yeah, like a like a like a space oh, punk like, like space punk, right? Like space dystopia. Mm. Right? Doesn't it? Space punk. You're right oh. though. And that's why I actually like those ones better. A little bit. Uh, they look maybe so much. But it's because we than, grew up. We also like, grew up with it. Like kids, definitely love. The, I looked the at the SpaceX look, ones and I was like, "Those look like something out of a movie." I get mm -hmm. it. I understand it. Mm -hmm. I like the old stuff because I'm I'm just a tool. But I mean, way. different functionality at the end of the day. Because and like, I can guarantee you, the ones that we're using up on IS, ISS when that do spacewalks are still the ones we're used to seeing. And that's for a very good reason. They have radiation shielding. They have life support modules. Everything. Yeah. Right. So. Yep. Normally, I hate touchscreens, and every time but... someone puts touchscreens in place of like traditional analog controls, I get angry about it. How did you feel when they first started introducing like full phone touchscreens? Oh, for the first few generations of it, I specifically went for phones with a keyboard. Uh... Yeah, I remember that. Uh, mm -hmm. I can get into that in another time, but mm. this time, unfortunately, it actually makes sense on a couple different ways. Oh. I disagree a, a panel heavily. full of switches with wires going to all of them eventually is going to be heavier yes. and more prone to breaking than a touchscreen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So when it's weight is things. a premium, unfortunately, yep. a touchscreen counts better. The other mm -hmm. thing... As the rocket gets updated and new features or controls or things like that get added, you don't they have just to have to change out hardware or software. Yep. They don't firmware. have to change anything on the control panel. They just yep. update the firmware and you're done. There's one thing mm -hmm. that I have to absolutely disagree with, though, on using... Is if their little... Uh, Dinosaur it, toy slams into it and cracks the screen. <laughs> oh, I was gonna make oh, I was gonna make wow. a joke, but it's <laughs> it's related to that, which is analog switches and controls have their place because they are much more easily replaceable. Period. Oh, absolutely. Let's say you have like if a little that touch screen, switch in the rocket. Yeah, if the if the touch screen has a and fucked up the panel, wires and just touch them if you needed to. If, if there's any kind of fuck up on the panel due to launch or some kind of technical malfunction, they suddenly like. Don't get me wrong, most of it is autopilot, but if they need to go manual, and they did test manual from what I understand, if something mm -hmm. was to go wrong, they are not going to be able to replace that test screen whatsoever. They just can't. Unless they had spares. Yep. I'm not saying that they, did, like, they didn't have any contingency plans. It well, just, it did look like there were multiple like, panels, right? Yeah. Um, the one thing that was really cool, though, on those touch screens, and it goes back to the whole how smooth and cinematic everything looked, the GUI on those screens from what I could see was also the shit you would see in a video game. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was... And I'm pretty sure they did that on purpose. They did everything was, on purpose. They cause... specifically made it to be... Yeah. Did as you, movie like as possible. If, if you watched it, as a sexy, like everything that they mentioned, because I don't follow all of SpaceX's like sort of uh, uh, developments, but so I was unaware of some of the things that they had named. But like they have things called like Merlin engines or like uh, uh, the Draco engines or something like that, and also you know like calling things like Falcon. They named it and, the Dragon. And dra- Falcon and Dragon and like all these sound really cool but they also yep. belong in movies not saying that it's like yep. not allowed to have them the, the 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 way that they are but marketing because it is a privatized endeavor is such a it's a major part it's a major part and there's nothing we wrong have with merlin it. engines all yeah. those other guys have is the bezos bald engine <laughs> you don't want the bezos bald engine you want the merlin wizard engine Life support brought to you by Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyways, it was oh, it was God. honestly really cool, and it was sort of a needed lift from everything that we've been experiencing. Uh, awesome, awesome project. Uh, glad to see it sort of happen. And I'm I'm, you know, like from a peripheral perspective, as I'm sure a lot of folks are really interested to see what kind of future it can bring right uh one big thing that's on a more personal level but not in a bad way is that angelo and dio are disease free well i don't know about that but at the very least we don't have covid (laughs) okay i don't want to know about the other diseases you don't know we could have parasites or something i mean that's true maybe we have a horrible eyebrow light infection you guys do have a cat, and that's a parasite. <laughs> yeah, we could have the, the toxoplasmosis or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you guys got just to. But no just COVID. To, yeah, no, no COVID, COVID, because we did mention it on the last episode, so I figure we should uh, give, uh, you, give people some closure. <laughs> it took a while uh, for us to get our results. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, it was you beyond the two to five day period that, that, mm-hmm. that they told us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do they have an explanation why? No. Huh. We just called them and we were like, where's the results? And they're like, we'll call you back. Don't call us, mm-hmm. we'll call you. They did eventually call us back, though, which was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because of that, I only missed five days of work total, I think. I also missed five days of work last week, but not because I was, you know, potentially down and out with a disease. I was on vacation. Nice. Staycation. Where'd you go? And then I came back. I came back to a hugely stressful day today, catching up with everything that oh, happened no. while I was gone. That's not good. But it's fine. My it's only fine. shift this week was a weekend shift, so nothing oh. happened. I basically biked to work, sat in a mm-hmm. chair for 12 hours, kicking up my feet, resting, mm-hmm. had, uh, had my lunch, and then I biked home. It was great. We did this thing where we said we were going to... Well, in previous episodes, I've mentioned how hesitant I am to order in a lot. And I know you guys told me that it would be fine because, you know, it's probably worth more to order in and have that mental sanity than to just force yourself to constantly be cooking for yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided to end off our vacation vacation in quotes because we didn't go did you guys both take a vacation go. yeah we did okay. we were supposed to go to a concert in toronto last week oh i see because ah. you said you did and uh, then you said we and i'm like interesting uh but you know because of current world events we are we didn't go anywhere we stayed in and so we ended mm-hmm. off our mm-hmm. vacation with uh ordering in fancy sushi having like dressing up sitting at our dining table and just gorging on sushi yes. <laughs> it was nom, nom, it nom. was amazing <laughs> it was well worth. That's good. Well worth. Where'd you order from? Uh, Greenfish. I don't know them. Uh, by Shokunin. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So Shokunin's uh, owner and uh, the owner of Foreign Concept have gotten together, and they have a little venture called Greenfish. And usually they run out of Avenida Market, but because that's closed down, they're just running out of Shokunin now. I see. 
and they are very available for deliveries. And oh my god, I should order from Shokunin. I mean, they're literally down the street from me, but still. They have, they have, so they have um, um, sushi kits. I'm literally looking at the menu four, right now, yeah. <laughs> and they have ramen kits mm -hmm. and uh, all of their usual really delicious appies. Mm -hmm. It was all really good. I think next time I'm going to get a ramen kit and just have ramen at home. Nice. That sounds like a great yeah, time. It was, it was really good. Like, you know, because we had that entire week, like, not even here in Calgary, just taken away. It was like, okay, what can we do in Calgary? We did a shit ton wow. of stuff around the house. That's an incredibly valuable, like, I'm looking at, I'm sorry, I'm looking at their menu uh yeah. really quick and they the menus. so they offer like these things called green boxes for yeah. like 19 green fish yeah boxes. three boxes one's 19 dollars one's 24 <laughs> one's 29 19 dollars mm -hmm. you get 20 20 pieces of sushi 24 dollars mm -hmm. you get 24 pieces of sushi and and some yep. other stuff maybe yep uh 28 for the 29 dollars you get 28 pieces like it's that's inc it's that's an incredibly good, good value deal. That's like a dollar it's a season. I can already vouch for Shokunin as like uh good eating food in general. Yeah. So like yep. that's insane. I'm I gotta send this to Bayfire. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Jay well worth having it. Sushi so... tonight. No, I'm not okay. I'm not having sushi tonight. I had on on another positive sort of note regarding like ordering out or or I didn't order out or or order in, I mean. But I am glad to see some restaurants, local restaurants, opening back up. I'm I'm glad mm -hmm. to see local businesses opening up. It doesn't mean that I want people to rush outside and do any any crazy shit. I'm just saying that people, nice. especially locals, local businesses, I'm happy to see them slowly come back. Um, mm -hmm. Not because of like I need them to be back, but it's just a it's a community thing too, right? Like. Local businesses add color to your local community, period. And and value too. Like if you think about oh, how yeah. much our local businesses local, provide. Local for businesses us. provide the best value. So not only did I get to gorge on Greenfish for four last night, and there's only the two of us, uh -huh. um, I also got to verify that I still fit in my dresses. It's nice. It's nice knowing that staying home for three months. You are tiny. Bad. How could you not <laughs> fit? Tiny. How could you not fit in the dress? I mean, if well, the dress I am a size tiny, 28 <laughs> the last 28? time I checked. <laughs> Wait, 28, 28 in like jean waist or No, like a dress <laughs> 28 size. in jeans would be exceptionally tiny. Slim. No, You'd in like a dress size I think it 28. was. I tried on like a This was years ago, so I'm probably bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried on a dress once because my my friend, you actually know her, Christina. I think we've told, mm. we might have talked about this on podcast before. But uh, mm -hmm. her family owns, uh, is in like the wedding industry and like like dress industry and formal wear and photography, that kind of thing. And one time we helped mm. her family move stores. And then she has like plus size, like her mother has like some plus size dresses in her stock. So we were like, so you... Yeah, after we moved, we we're like, I don't know, we we're just like <laughs> screwing around and we like tried on some dresses. And when I say we, I mean, there was like six, six or eight of us kind of there and we we're just like uh -huh. screwing around. Uh, and yeah, we like tried on some dresses and I found out what size I'm, I am in a dress. That's great. At least you know. found out the size for that dress in that brand. Mm hmm. I don't That's know. things. true. Whatever. I mean, if, if my understanding of vanity sizing is anything... Uh, that means you could be anywhere from a size 8 up to a size 56. Yep. Sure, whatever. <laughs> Sizing is a no very weird beast in the fashion world. But, but it's not a fashion a world thing. It was time. more like wedding well, dress no, styles. For any clothing. Any clothing. Not I for know guys. that dress sizes have a standard sizing but it's not true because you can be like even even if i go looking for a dress like a, a dress not even just like a wedding dress if i go looking for a dress i could be a double zero or a six mm -hmm. and you can't even math your way out of it because you double can't. zero exists and is a thing that is unique from zero that's mm -hmm. bullshit and so is triple zero apparently last time i looked there was a triple zero Triple zero is but... like you are a 2D person, right? Like you are literally <laughs> Paper Mario or Paper Peach. I know 
I know it's difficult for you to grasp. Triple zero but there should are actually girls, be. There are ladies who are smaller than me. That should, that should me. be bigger than just zero because there's more okay. of them. Okay. I want to ask honestly, though. Like, this is not. Okay. Is that someone who may have an eating disorder? No. no. People can just be small. No. Yeah, I'm not the very. Like, I'm not at the furthest of the scale where you go towards. I could the actually person. imagine Nancy being a triple or a quadruple zero in some brands. Okay, no, but probably. I mean, like, in a but standardized, the... in a very standardized, like, if we took a standard measure, and if there said, were a standard defined... measure, double zero wouldn't be a thing. No, but I'm saying, mm -hmm. again, like, the, asking honestly, is, is something like a triple zero, like, usually reserved for somebody who is, like, abnormally thin? If you think about it, there are girls, not even girls, but, like, even guys, there are people who are shorter than me and thinner than me. Yes, I call and... them children. But that's, <laughs> well, no, that's not what I'm getting. That's not true. That yeah, there are plenty true. of fat children in the world. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be fair, I like buying kids' shoes because they're way cheaper when you're looking for cross trainers than like Wow, adult I didn't shoes. even I think about that. Let's be honest. That's not why you're saying You're saying it's because it's cheaper, but it's really because you like it's the light cheaper. up souls. Let's be uh, honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's because you want the light-up light souls. souls. I totally would. You can, Angelo. Shit. Actually, here's the thing. You're calling me out here. Now that my tastes have changed, I would need, like, individually addressable RGB souls and, like, Ooh. leather boots. Oh, do they make Ooh. you game better? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Loser. 100%. Loser. You, you can step <laughs> aggressively towards the, uh, towards the other gamers in chat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Totally. But it's true. Like I, I famously go to the boys' cross trainer section at Sport Check for sales. It's true. I have tiny feet. It works in my if favor. If I could, uh, I would. Your Asian heritage would be proud of you, because you don't even need to it's... foot bind. <laughs> <laughs> I am, for the record, a size five in ladies. Are you actually a Very size five? Very rarely do I eat. Yes, very rarely do I actually find shoes that are size five anyway. How tall are you? So you're uh in inches, like feet and inches. I'm five two. Yeah, you're probably about a, a true size five then. Like with average correlation. Like there is a, th I used to sell shoes, and I got to a point that like I I did it for like I don't know two or three years. I don't really remember anymore. And I got to a point where I can basically look at someone's foot and be like, "You're this size foot." Damn. Uh, I kn I and He's I know good. that I know I'm good because the year that we did um the drag uh, uh contest or drag performance after for closing ceremonies last year, I went shop. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean that was forever ago, right? That was like six years ago at least. <laughs> <laughs> uh we went shot like I, i've told the story before too we went uh thrifting with vicky who had to you know yep. cross as a dude and uh -huh. we went to like a value village and found her some shoes but she like i found shoes that fit her immediately off the rack <laughs> and, as, and like vicky is all like smaller than you are so she's actually probably a harder size to even find for and i was like those are the ones and I went to the kids section for them. <laughs> and she See? she was freaked out. See what I mean? She was freaked out. She was like, How do you know? I'm like, I can tell. But I also have good like spatial uh reasoning, obviously. Yeah. So just you should have just done like one of the uh I know these things. Oh, I did. And then just left it at that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. See see what I mean though? Like if you are my size, you actually get a pretty good deal going to like the kids section to go shopping mm -hmm. if you know they have things that don't look too childish. Mm -hmm. But hey, cross trainers? That doesn't matter, right? Yeah. When was the last time I bought shoes? Like, actual shoes. I buy shoes for work. Because steel I need steel toes. Oh, Why do you need steel I didn't know toes? that. In also, do you I need steel toes? Or... Uh, composite, so there's two composite things. Composite toes. Rather, just toe protection in case I drop a 500-pound server on my foot. Uh-huh. And mm. uh, optionally, but recommended, uh, insulation. Hmm. <laughs> Like, uh, the shoes Is that I have really now cold? are insulating up to 10,000 volts. Oh, I see. That's neat. I didn't think you would need something like that, but I mean, sure, why not? 
Oh, yeah, I hear it, a pup. it literally is. In case we drop a heavy uh, server chassis on our feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, that's fair. It makes sense. Better safe than footless. Exactly. Toeless. Well, I don't get don't paid get enough to lose my feet. I was going to say, those are, your, those are your money makers. You can't just lose them. Exactly. What would I do in my OnlyFans? Yeah. I guess speaking of feet. <laughs> yes. Speaking of feet, going back on our last week's mm, episode. Give us the how, feet news. How did the foot peel perform? Uh, so it began two days ago. Like, it's been almost a week, I guess. Uh, but it began peeling like two days ago and it finished yesterday and it was pretty good. Like it's a little, I mean, it's terrifying how much skin comes off, but it pretty much is All everything the that, skin comes off. Yeah. The, I will say the, the biggest negative of it was how, uh, uncomfortable it is because you, and it's easy to forget this the skin between your toes also is going to be coming off and that feels very mm -hmm. like uncomfortable it's very like oh yeah i don't know I, I, itchy is not the right word it's just sort of an irritation it's like having your toes like just filled with toe jam no that's not yeah. true at all no it just feels like that's, i feel like it's not what it feels no like. it, it, it feels like if i just put a whole bunch of white glue between my toes and let that Oh, uh, let that, that solid dry fantastic. and solidify. That's what it feels like. It, yeah. Like there's something there. <laughs> it's not something painful or irritable, but it's Taking not it supposed to be so there, good, right? So, tell me how much skin. What was it like? All the skin. <laughs> All the skin. Did it come off in sheets? Um, some of it. Like I, it says not to peel, but like not to not to pick at it. But I picked at it anyway. Because I had nothing better to do, and I don't really care that much. Which How was soft not are really they? Are, do They're they make you want to rub your feet on your face? No, never, because I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a foot person, really. But uh, if you are, I mean, power to you. Just stay away from me. <laughs> uh, no, the truth is, like, yeah, they're softer, and I'm sort of more willing to like want to take care of them a little bit more. And it did mm -hmm. well. It, like it, it didn't like remove outright like the calluses that I have built up. It did definitely like take off probably a couple layers, and it it feels nicer than it was before. Got and rid I, of I, some I, of the sharp yeah, angles. Yeah. The other thing is like I have another pack uh, that I'm probably going to use in like a couple months because that's when it's recommended to if you want to do a second one is uh, wait a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, so I will probably do it again, and then I'll probably not do one again for, like, I think at least a year, maybe a few years, that kind of thing. But the main goal for me was to get rid of, uh, some of the callousing, which it has done very admirably, actually. Um, I, I kind of wish it didn't go as high as it did, and I wish it covered more of my heel. Like, it went up, uh, like, maybe an inch over my, where my sole would be, I guess. Which okay. is a lot, but it didn't really get my heel, and my heel has more callusing and is drier there, which I understand is the case of for heels in general. A lot of people have dry heels, whether you have calluses yeah, or not. Yeah, it's pretty common. But like, I just mean like it should have. I wish it went higher on the heel as opposed to just the sole of my heel. But overall, like I would, I would recommend it to anybody who feels like they don't really want calluses on their feet very much anymore, especially for guys that might think it's like weird. Or something like that. Like, yeah, it is a little weird, but I mean, the results are pretty cool. It's kind of a like a like a gross fascination to just see yeah. how skin works. Like, you're this is this is normal function for your skin. It's just being encouraged to come off. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's a lot of skin, and and your body just keeps making more of it. Sure does. Cool. And I mean, like calluses have their have their reasoning Advantages. for existing. Like, I mean. Why, the reason I had them is because certain parts of like my work boot or whatever when I was when I was working a lot more actively made me build up those calluses and it does help and I'm all, all, I haven't worn my boots I won't be wearing my boots until later this week um, so I don't know if I'll be feeling how weird that might be like if it, there's any pain or or something like that but I don't imagine so right now it feels do you, I feel positive do you like to wear socks normally like when you're home no Okay, so 
chances are it probably won't have sensitized your skin too much. Like, I don't think it was using, like, dead skin as a barrier against sensation. But I know that whenever I get, like, a foot peel done, which, you know, I've only done, like, once or twice, my skin doesn't, like, it doesn't feel like it's more sensitive. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm feeling more things. Like, the texture of carpet doesn't feel more or less different than like before wait are you saying you so do wear socks fine. or don't wear socks i do wear i oh. do wear socks at home but like despite that i don't feel that a foot peel is like sensitizing to your skin mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. least not me i i feel like my feet are maybe a little bit more sensitive but not in like a any like major way they're just like slightly softer like the other thing is at the end of the day we live in a very dry climate so like yeah. the skin dryness will build up again quite quickly and then the hardness will mm -hmm. kind of come back like i can already feel that it's it's like harder than the day that it was peeling or whatever but on the whole like it does feel a lot nicer there's definitely benefits to it so if i did this on a more regular basis like once every six months or even just once a year i think there would be like continued uh, uh benefit from it do the old Christmas foot peel. That way, once the new year rolls around, new feet roll around too. New year, no f new feet. <laughs> new year, new feet. New toes. Ooh, that's actually <laughs> like a, a Chinese thing. Like at Chinese New Year, you're supposed to wear new shoes. Yeah, well, I'm not. I don't afford new shoes every year, and I don't want new shoes every year. That'd be too many. But fucking you can afford shoes. new feet. It'd well, be too so many now, shoes. Well, I mean, yeah, but like. Now you don't have to go buy new shoes. Now you just get like your new just shoes. Yeah, and then peel. again, once no, I master, new... once I master the picking and peeling, I will be able to remove all the skin in one go and preserve a foot boot. Like a sock. Yeah, foot boot. And then those, <laughs> like a sock. Yeah, those will be my new my new <laughs> shoes. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah. Thank you, Jay. I look forward to <laughs> gazing upon your new shoes. Oh, yes, uh, it'll be. I won't even. I won't even have to go to the kids section for them. You know. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? <laughs> Aren't you lucky? But yeah. Throughout this um, year, we've dealt with with fires, uh, unlimited protests, pandemics, volcanic eruptions, World War Three threats. But at least we got new foot skin. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, new feet. Speaking of protests, there was we did have one in Calgary today. I believe it was being organized. Was there? Yeah, I think so. I hope they're all quarantining for fourteen days, self quarantining after that. It won't work. I know of a uh, one person who went from Colorado to Chicago to protest. That's insane. Damn. That is insane. I feel sometimes that the world is lacking a lot of empathy. And and now more than ever, that empathy needs to come up. It's important for us to observe until we have to act and understand why we're acting. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's so much that could be said, and yeah, I just don't think I'm the I person think, to say it. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of things we want to say, but we're worried that we're not going to word it as eloquently as it could be as eloquently as it should be or that it has to be as it should be as it as it really should be because a lot of these things are <laughs> i cannot say it right i am great at reading scripts when someone's written them for me i'm not good at improvising speech but in the meantime i mean find your own way to support yeah. a lot of people are uh fundraising to local charities or BLM, BLM movements, or organizations, um, more than anything like that on big picture stuff, like support the people that need supporting around you. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. So I think that's a pretty good place to end it. I think so too. Be excellent to each other. For an exact date of when we'll be back, check social media. Yeah. J July Zemberish. Gist. The forty third of July Vember. Yeah. July Vember gist. We just not like up in the air, but it's always <laughs> an in progress thing. So we have to determine certain things that we want to work on 
and find solutions for those before we're going to be like, okay, we're comfortable. Let's move on and start producing the new episodes, right? Yes. So, as I'm sure most understand about that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. As always, thank you for listening. Uh, mm-hmm. We hope that you all have a safe summer and an enjoyable summer, even though it might be a little bit different than usual. You know, Odafest loves you. We love you. And we hope that you take care of yourselves. Pray that the world doesn't end this be year. Excellent. If the world does end Oda this year, to try to get year. on a space trip. <laughs> Just go. Praise Lord Musk. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks for listening. (laughs) Goodbye.